All right, here it is. This is a 1981 Jeep, gla uh, not, well, I say Gladiator, but it's a J20. There we go, J20, four-wheel drive. This truck has a 360 V8 AMC engine. It's got a little bit of, a little bit of rust, a couple little rust holes here and there, you know. A little more back here on the uh, cab corner delete. The truck box is a little bit, you know. But we're not worried about that. That's not going to stop it from driving down the road. And uh, it's pretty complete. The grill's got a little bit of damage on it. The bumper's almost perfectly straight. A little bit of, um, dare we say, patina. And yeah, so this is a three quarter ton. And it actually has, it's kind of rare these days, the tailgate. Working Jeep tailgate, pretty cool. It's got the old flip lever. Look at that, eh? Not bad, not bad. So yeah, she's a little rough around the edges, but <coughs> not a bad rig. Hey guys, Dave from Days of Glory Shopworks here, and on this video, we're gonna kinda go through what it takes to do a revival, AKA get some of my old junk running. We all see these revival videos, right? And can we get it started? Can we? Well, there's there's some that yes you can, some you can't. But what makes a good revival? What makes a good candidate to bring back on the road? Well, it's got to be something that catches your eye. Got to be something that you think you're uh, going to enjoy doing. And uh, in my eyes, it's got to be something fairly complete. The less missing parts, the better. There's no point in reviving something if you're taking three quarters of the parts off two or three other vehicles to put on the one that was stripped down in the first place. That just doesn't make any sense. So, without further ado, we're going to go through this together and see if we can get this old 1981 Jeep J20 running again. Let's see what happens. Alright, so so far, this looks like a pretty good candidate for a revival. AMC Motorcraft. So that's a DuraSpark or DuraSpark 2 unit. Not really my favorite deal, but hey, no worries. Oh, looks like I need a couple of clamps for the battery cables. Good to know. Oh, yeah, it's even got the battery hold down. Super cool. That right there. We want to revive this Jeep. We want to get it running, moving under its own power, hopefully stopping under its own power. And, uh heaven forbid some of the interior functions work like signal lights and headlights and the important items for driving we need to pre-plan right we need we're doing a revival we need to pre-plan just a little bit you've got to bring a, some basic tools up here to the backyard we got to bring uh, a battery cable clamps fuel line fuel filter maybe a couple of fuel filters i might do the old roadkill deal where you put a few of them in line seems to get them somewhere so we'll see I don't know what's in the fuel tank, but we are going to disconnect and remove the propane stuff. Right. So we're going to pick this up in the morning when it's not raining. And uh, I'm kind of excited. I, I, I don't normally do revival videos. All right. So one of the best things you can do when starting a revival style project is to get your eyes on it first. Kind of see what it needs. Like there's no point in... Uh, just showing up with a couple of random things and hoping you're gonna get it happening now uh, quick and easy on this rig I needed uh, I need battery cable clamps there we go a couple of universal battery cable clamps they'll do for now um, the idea is get it fired up cheap as we can um, fuel filters I got this guy right here. I know the fuel line is 5 16 so a couple of these clear inline filters. And I do have a couple of the steel inline filters as well. I don't know what the fuel tank might be like. I'm hesitant to run it on it. I don't even know if the fuel pump 
pumps right now. This thing started its life uh, working on propane, so we're gonna attempt to get the fuel system side of it working again. Who knows what that's gonna entail. Simple and easy, old truck's been sitting for a while. Anything, vacuum plugs. Never know what's gonna be uh, rotted apart. This one I know is a little bit low on coolant, so just some plain Jane coolant. If it gets fired up, I got some diesel engine oil here. The cheapest stuff I could find because, again, I don't know what the engine is like. I don't even know if there's oil in it. And if it keeps going good, well, we got a few oil filter. What else do we got here? Okay, for the fuel pump, I don't know if it works, but we're going to try and hook up to it. So... I don't have the steel line that runs from the carburetor to the fuel pump, but I did get a look at a picture of a brand new pump this morning on, uh, at, uh, at my local Napa. And so I picked up a couple of these. These are uh, inverted flare fittings. I believe it's going to be this 5 16th one, and I just got to put a little bend in it. If not, this is a quarter inch. And if that's not it, and if it's a 3 8 then I have the fittings in the garage. But if I was in a remote location, I would have bought one of these like, you know, 12 inch, 10 inch long ones uh, with a 3 8 fittings on it. Inverted flare, there we go. Got some fuel line. Jerry can of gas for the hopeful. Some brake fluid. Uh, just a top up of engine oil. A little bit of power steering fluid and this is starting fluid which I'm planning on not using but it's one of those I just want to hear it run and pop over so we're gonna to try to get fired up on gasoline first after that I mean you go to simple stuff pair of work gloves little tool kit of sockets and I have a toolbox here uh, full of uh, random stuff uh, you know pliers vice grips straight screwdrivers, um, knife, scissors, a couple of odds and ends of wrenches, a couple of pry bars. I don't think we're going to get into it that crazy. But then also too, if everything else goes well, well this thing's sitting on one flat tire. So uh, I took a spare tire, went to the shop this morning when I picked up this stuff uh, and I resealed the tire because that was flat. So we do have a, a round tire to put on it. Uh, we just have to jack it up and change it if we get the engine running and it looks like it's running competently. All right, without further ado, let's get to it. All right, step one for this rig, we're going to see if the engine actually turns over by hand. And that's going to be kind of a... Oh, it does. I wonder... It's got a little bit of compression in it. A bit of grass we don't need. Yeah, I mean, it winds over. Um, I wish it had a little more resistance. So it could be a 100% oil burner. It has sat for, oh, let me think. Can't quite verify it, but I want to say 20 years. Okay, it winds over. Let's uh, see if there's any engine oil in it. Oh, well, there's oil. And it actually... Looks uh, half clean. Let's get a feel of that. See how it feels. See how it smells. Smell like anything. Oh, that's nice. Uh, I'll tell you a little secret about oil being nice and uh, nice and tidy. This thing ran on propane. And propane engines don't put near the amount of uh, carbon and soot down into an engine that regular gasoline operation does. Now we're still going to make it run on gasoline because I'm not interested in completely going through the propane system on this engine and recertifying it and all that jazz. That's just not in the cards. But we're going to pull the air cleaner off see what kind of a hookup the propane system has and then we're gonna have to uh, delete the uh, propane system oh 
air filter looks good. Uh, looks like we got a two barrel motorcraft carburetor on there. Kind of to be expected. All right, this is what we're working with right now. What we're gonna just end up doing here is we're gonna unplug this relay. And that should disable the whole propane system for us right there. So here's a fuel line coming off the carburetor. And it's supposed to run to a line that runs down the side to a fuel pump Oh, <laughs> I wish I had looked a little bit closer. We've actually got a fuel pump delete on this thing. So we won't be running it off the fuel pump today. All right, so that does change things a little bit. Uh, no fuel pump means we're not going to be drawing fuel from the fuel tank today. But that doesn't mean that we can't bottle feed it and get it, uh, get it operational that way. So, uh, yeah, okay. We're gonna hook up a fuel filter and some kind of a bottle to it. Uh, try to hook it on the hood maybe, we can gravity bleed it. And then we're gonna see, see what all's gonna happen. The carburetor linkage is nice and free. I'm pretty happy about that. This, I, I mean honestly, this could be okay. Or it can be completely dry rotted out and not be any good at all. Uh, next up on the list here though, before we get that far, uh, this thing is just, just annoying. It's been bugging me. This cap has not been put down properly for the brake fluid and the front reservoir is not dry but it's close. Rear still has some in it so uh, we're going to take this uh, probably expired brake fluid and we're just going to fill it into the reservoir. That way, if there's any air bubbles, they can work out as we go. Fluid doesn't look too scammy, to be honest. Like me saying 20 years, who knows? Could be a lot sooner, actually. Might only have been sitting for 10, but I know it has been sitting, so we'll, uh, yeah, we'll take it from there. All right, now I can put this cap down properly. All right, um, I'm back. I uh, put about two liters of coolant in it. That brought the level up to mm, midway on the tank, which is fine because there's no recovery tank. Next up, I'm gonna hook up my fuel line to my uh, new to me. Uh, oh, there's a good spot right there. Um, well, okay. I'm gonna hook up the battery negative. Well, that's a good sign so far. I don't see any arcing or sparking. Let's uh, see if we're getting fuel into the carburetor. Maybe. I do have a fuel leak at the base of the carburetor though, so we're gonna try and fire it up before that becomes a fire hazard. Let's hit the key and see what happens. Hey, we got oil pressure. Hey, 
it runs. Just not very well. All right, let's uh, stop that for now. Make sure the key is off. Check my fuel leak. Yep, fuel leak still leaking. All right, so I ran it off camera just for a, about 30 seconds. It started taking fuel nice and all that jazz but we might have a problem. I noticed there's a bunch of engine oil down on the ground that wasn't there before. And there's not many reasons except for say, a hole in the oil pan maybe? Or in the engine block? I don't know. We're gonna have a look. Maybe it's just the dipstick tubes poked out. I don't, I don't know. All right, I'm gonna climb underneath the sea. <laughs> yeah, we got a window in the engine block. Well, that's sadness. All right, guys. Well, as far as surprises go, I was not expecting that. But as far as it goes, I guess this is a, a revival video that you would maybe you're, you're going to run across if you're if you're doing this stuff you want to go fire up an old rig you, you're going to run across this stuff so i'm not calling this a failure it's not a win i was kind of hoping to be running this buggy around my backyard here today but uh, <laughs> that ain't happening uh, especially not without a fuel pump and all the other extra things to get fuel making happen to it so we're going to leave it at that guys um and i really appreciate you following along i i, I enjoyed going through the steps uh and uh like you know it's, it's a little pre-planning stuff you i charged up a battery last night got some fuel this morning got a, some fuel filters uh you know uh grab some stuff out of the garage brake fluid oil uh extra things that you would think some tools pretty basic pretty basic to do one of these i got booster cables in the truck if the battery ran low but it you heard it it flashed right up pretty happy uh aside from the hole in the oil pan uh, but that's where we're going to leave it because I'm not going to uh, destroy this engine. If I'm going to do anything with it, I'll pull the pan off, see if it's uh, see if there's clearance enough. Maybe I maybe I can swap a rod out and piston assembly. I don't know, but I do have another AMC 360 sitting right beside me uh, with the water pump and a few things yarded off it. So it's it's definitely not out of the woods yet. Worst case, LS swap. Anyway, from David Day's Glory Shop Works. Appreciate everyone of you. Thank you for following along. We'll see you on the next one.